Hello viewers, this is Yorleif speaking from actually a time later than this playthrough was recorded. Uh, so as you may or may not know, there were some audio issues with the OBS cutting off some words due some to, to a low microphone gain. So so you'll be hearing two Yorleifs during this video, which is one from the original playthrough. It's, and I'm a bit lower there and my words are getting cut off now and then. And then there's me from from now, but hopefully we'll make good content out of it and uh, and uh, me from the future from this playthrough's perspective can give some uh, um, maybe even cast myself a bit in talking about this mission and also uh, if there's are if there are parts which are cut off, maybe I can from here tell what was being said and so forth but without further ado let's get into this Viewers, video casting i suppose we will be playing through the fourth mission of saladin siege of jerusalem jerusalem 20 years have i been with the saracens saladin's target is jerusalem the great ancient city is sacred to christianity judaism and islam and is the virtual capital of the holy land if there can be a victor in this endless conflict, it will be the army that holds Jerusalem. To complicate matters, Saladin is determined not to harm the city itself. If a single holy shrine is damaged, the populace might well view Saladin not as a liberator, but as yet another conqueror. Alright, so here is a part I was going to edit out of, but since this is the original video, I'll just skip ahead. The first one being destroy the five towers defending Jerusalem so that Saladin's army can fight the city. The second one of being do not there. allow any Jerusalem, the monastery or the dome of the rock to be destroyed. Five hit. First one being Saladin is restricted to population limit of hundred. But can now advance to the imperial age. Two Kisrede orders have outlying bases that should be dealt with. Before the assaulting a city. So you can read it there can make as well, of course. Of towers from a distance. Cut off Jerusalem's food supply by raiding outlying farms. It's only spare Jerusalem's monasteries and the Dome of the Rock. You may destroy those of the Knights Templar or Hopkins. Tell us. Saladin's army, play one green, has assembled to the northeast of Jerusalem and has already set up a small camp. Jerusalem, play a two two, is located in the center of the map. Its defenders will rely primarily on archery units and their powerful cataracts to parry any assaults that come their way. The Hospitalis play a 3 orange, camp to the west, but they, but have, they also have also owned some owned, military. But they also, <laughs> but they have also own some. <laughs> I actually wrote a bug report on also that own writing. Some military buildings inside Jerusalem. They will send. Tonic Knights, Scorpions, and the Knights into battle. The Knights Templar, player 4 yellow, have taken their position to the south. They are led by the Master of the Templar himself. Commands numerous swordsmen and knights. It cuts right. off like the who there. Shots from our bows really miss their mark. I wonder... The base is formidable. I advise building defenses until we have a large army. I wonder if the Archer of the Eyes have some kind of special accuracy. Right. Statistic. Well, here I go. I set up my economy as usual. Did it, we did get one scout, which is getting very nice. There were surprisingly many sheep on this map, on this mission. So we have. Although, of course, I won't be spoiling too much of what happens later on in the playthrough. I have no recollection really. I thought I remembered uh, this mission from when I was a kid, but I actually remembered a different mission, Grab perhaps. Because I believe you you go to Jerusalem in a different campaign as well. That's probably what I remembered when I thought this. So we should be want to clean off the flying camps. Yeah. So I was saying here, or trying to say. Is that 
My plan was to clear off the the yellow and orange camps outside of Jerusalem first. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but here and you can plenty see. Of deer. Plenty of sheep, plenty of deer. Huge amount of sheep, actually. It's an insane amount of sheep. It's a milk. I think I got a bit ahead of myself building both. I only have six villagers total. So I think I actually delete the stable soon. Since I really have nowhere near enough economy to sustain both knights or camels and crossbows. Ah, oh, there's no shortage of. It's an interesting thing to, to start so these campaign starts, you start in Castle Age and you get quite a good army and everything and, and you only have three villagers so, so it's a bit... So if, you, if you're just used to playing random map where you will always have quite a lot of villagers and Castle Age is going to be a bit weird and suddenly you're in Castle Age you have a big army but you only have three villagers so you need to... You need to sort of slowly start the production as if you were almost in Dark Age since you have so few villages. Awesome. You want to keep if you slam down many production buildings like three staples but only have six villages here. You could have used those resources better to get them all smooth going otherwise it's just idle production buildings here. You've built on not much good. Which is why I deleted that stable and bought a, bought a blacksmith instead. But we are getting there. Six on food for for our filter production. I do want to get some four on gold and and two on wood for the oh, monk. The monks in this campaign always went for the relics. Like no matter what. Just keep going for the relics. I suppose that's scouts. Yeah, scout cavalry is faster than light cavalry. Oh, I found a hill. Well, you can do. Let me know after or during, if you like, the video in the comment how how you like this format, or if it's a bit too weird to have two your lives. But I didn't, I usually don't, like sometimes I, I really don't talk much. Maybe, it might be maybe, perhaps a bit too quiet, so in that sense it might be nice that you have me to feel a bit more sense. On the other hand, it can, some people, stone, might also lo prefer stone silent gameplay. I have enough. Yeah, now I just realized I start with 900 stone. So it's, it's a lot of stuff I, I don't really look at in the beginning, like starting resources I didn't pay much attention to this mission. Yeah, many on food. we floating all of soon. Well, that's a very nice cliff there in relation to the town center I put down. And now I want to get ballistics from a nice crossbow site. So the rest are going as well. Saracens have very, very decent archers. And they get arbalests and they get both thumb ring and brace and all that good stuff. I do think they get all of the technologies for archers, if I'm not mistaken. It's actually a really good base that. Uh, Castle is really well covering the economy. There. Oh, that's 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 just amazing. That the gold and the food and the wood protected so well by that cliff castle and that town center. 
Really safe. Patient gap of 100. Supposedly, last game they told us. We yeah, so that, that I can spoil. There's no bug in this mission. See, so, we didn't get 200 or more. We, we actually got 100 population, just as the hint said. So, slowly and surely, I'm building up my economy. I want to get those delicious venison as well. Yes. Wouldn't. And we've found all of the enemies. So, uh, There's they are there. literally on opposite sides, on each, one side each. So, so we have orange to really northwest, bad. and we have yellow in the southeast. So, quite many flanks here. Very well spread out across the map in relation to we are. I just put a house building villager to keep building houses. But I did, I did, I can say ahead that I do get a bit flabbergasted this game with the low population limit. I got a bit spoiled in La but the previous mission with having 200 population. And in that mission, like all the... All the enemies were lined up in a nice pile or row. I'll just speak. Here, here we have a, a, a huge Jerusalem base in the middle, which we can't really touch, which we need to be careful of because there's so many monasteries and stuff. And then we have the uh, Crusader enemies, one on each side. So, this is a bit more tricky situation in this map than the previous game. Ah yes, and I sent a few camels to... to just in case the, they would send more monks, and they did indeed. I don't remember how many monkeys will get those camels, but we'll see. Sheep. Most... Put out of village production. Plus those deer. Harvesters don't drop off food as reliably as sheep on the town center. I, I sent quite a lot on food now. I wasn't folding food yet, but I do remember that we folded food. Ah, there's another monk kill. Amazing. We've gotten two monk kills in counting for, for a monk screen to get that right. This is cleaned up very easily. This castle is so amazing. That's And I think uh, I'll just <laughs> leave. I think I'll just leave like 20 population of from the garrison in that castle at all times. This game almost. This was. It is such an effective defense, though. Oh, we'll see how how the game progresses. Once hero archer of eyes having a stable golden halo aura around them. Now I decide to pick up the relic. Although I was considering for a while, would it be better to just camp the relic with camels for infinite monk kills? If that would be a bit value than the gold income itself this early on. Perhaps, perhaps it would be, but, but of course later on in the game you definitely need the long term gold income. Well this is the first uh, Saladin mission which we can go to the Imperial Age. So Mamluks, uh, like very gold-heavy un units, the Saracens have to offer the Mameluk Mamluks or as expensive as they are, you can get them fully upgraded. And we do get plenty of gold. We have two large gold piles here. And there's plenty of more gold out on the map. Plenty of resources, this map. Sweet time getting our economy going. Still so far I only have one archer range producing. But the fastest booming pace with one town center, but I, I think I, I usually in these campaigns I usually just don't really I don't really boom or over boom that much. I just take the village population to half the adds to final population cap.
Well, I'm not even sure what I said. That's too true to myself. No. Some sometimes it, it cuts off. It cuts off a lot of what I was saying. Okay, so now I'm getting a stable up and for some knights. Or we're in we get to imperial age now, so probably camels instead of knights, since we don't get even cavaliers as Saracens. Right, nice. Finally getting ballistics. And all those juicy upgrades when we have a big economy now. Bigger economy. Oh, we got the relic. Can't farm monk kills anymore there, but it's okay. Uh, once the, that ballistics hit in, that castle is going to be... Oh, now we get the first KP boys coming in. Yeah. The moon moonwalking knight there for so. Get my farms going. There's actually a cliff there which which I which I showed just now. So usually if there's just a few straggle trees you can get those stragglers laid on and then place farm them. but that's those embellishment cliffs the permanent obstacles, so just have to move the mill there a bit. Now that's probably me hitting the accidentally hitting the enter key while going for the delete key. Does that happen? Rams. I should have checked the stats of one of those Archer of the Eyes. I was curious, but I forgot to do it. But of course, one can always just check the scenario at a later for any units. If one is very curious, still going for knights. I suppose I haven't realized yet that we don't really get any viable late game knights as Saracens. I suppose at this moment still in the playthrough I, it's still a bit forgotten about it but a bit later on I will realize that so as for stable I will just go with heavy camels. Ah, oh, floating a lot of gold. I was just realized it. It is quite a small e economy of 50 villagers. On the other hand, when, if you only get 100 population limit, you, you need some space for the military as well. I'm still going nice. Still at the stage where I don't really remember that. There's not many upgrades for the Saracen Knights in the Imperial Age. And now I decide to go pick on one of the enemies I feel sufficiently safe at home assault. and I, and that I have a sufficiently large army so I go pick off go, I go try and pick on um, test the defenses of orange a bit and maybe even wipe them out if, if possible with that small army who knows Slacking on my scout things. Yeah, my scout died when it found orange and haven't really scouted since. Those KP boys are tanky. Attacking me. Still haven't clicked up the Imperial Age. We really should have gotten more farms. Even more farms than a bit earlier. We're almost 2k gold now. We have Saracen Market. I didn't think of that at all. Could have just easily sold off some. Bought some food rather. For a quick Imperial Age, but didn't cross my mind at all. Hujum! 
We have scorpions, but we'll clean those up easily with the cavalry. There's quite a lot of, of, of my speaking which get cut off if it's, it's sometimes during the playthrough when I'm playing I or maybe almost mumble or speak in a very low volume so that got cut off quite cut off quite a lot if there was any of that low, lower than medium volume speaking from me playthrough. But there will be a noise gate. And all the all the Jeru Jerusalem farmlands that was on the on the rear end, the the southwest side there. Oh, there's a scout there already. There weren't really any farms elsewhere on the map. On blue. There's plenty of stone there, I should find. No, just no. So. I did have the option to use plenty full of castles. Which we might soon enough. Oh boy. Counter attack. And then I was curious are they, come, are they coming from my base now? Or what's going to come? Some campaigns they have quite ferocious attacks, which they will let you know about beforehand. And we finally are up to Imperial Age. Finally. Some lone KP boys here and there. Not too scary. Your rams not very threatening. Both units. I did remember to quite quickly take upgrades. Got to up to the age, that's good. Some that's counter attack. Good. Oh, that's that counter attack, yeah. Oh, looks like sorted it out. Yeah, castle sorted everything out. Even if I didn't notice it at all. It's very easy when, when you are fighting in one or more places or you're already looking at a fight. And then it ve it's very easy to not notice when you're getting attacked at home when you're looking at a fight in front of you. Because there, there is the differentiate the attack alerts. There's, when it attacks units or military, it's just the. Ooh. I said the. Want some trumpets, but if they attack your oh, army buildings, you get a bit of bail in the alert as well. Oh. I didn't want that color, I just didn't. Not that it would have mattered, not that it would have done anything for them, but... Like, you know. Took a lot of unnecessary deaths there. The TC. Even a few kills there to the orange TC. The castle is very effective. I still have 20 arbalists garrison there, idling in at castle. But I would say at this point it's definitely worth it so far, because it means they could just defend the, their entire pre wound counterattack without me even paying attention to it. They could have picked off my, my periphery farms there, but they haven't really. Stone. Even more gold there. Nice. Good build here that I also noticed there's more stone. Yeah. Sometimes it's just. Cuts off the first or half the words of the sentence. But I'll, I'll definitely make sure in the future playthroughs. I already have a, I already have a checklist of what to check before recording a playthrough to make sure it goes smoothly. But checking the operating system microphone input gain in Windows was not part of my checklist. It is now definitely. But well, beforehand, I've, already, I've only checked the OBS settings and the game settings, and up until 
now. I had assumed that that would be a sufficient routine checklist that recording would go smoothly, but we learn with our mistakes. And from now on, every time I will upload before I record, I will always check the operating system input gain in the microphone from the window. <laughs> it's fine. I still hear my interesting noises. An enemy mangonel approaches my arches. Sudden gasp of fear and whatnot. But that's fun that it doesn't cut off all those interesting sounds. Maybe. I think. That's bit. That's a bit annoying. When I, I say I say something, I think something, but it's just that's through the word I think, but not what it is that I think. Annoying. Good. Get all the upgrades in. I was very easy spending with my gold. I think I got both heresy and faith. So that's... I think that's almost 3k gold. Between 2 and 3k gold. Just to, so I don't have to worry about conversions anymore. But the gold on the ground is slowly but surely running out though. Slowly but surely it seems we're, we're cleaning off orange. And then we have to waddle around all the whole map. The other, very other side of the map to also wipe out yellow. So it's taking its sweet time. And of course we haven't even started really with the main objective yet, which is destroy the five. Ah, there's a <laughs> Jerusalem monk there. Oh, Jerusalem's not red. Waiting to get the monk, the, the orange relic they can't get. So that's an, another possibility to camp there just for monkey kills. Swordsman. It's interesting that oh. Jerusalem is the only enemy in, in Imperial Age. I would, have I would have expected that the, that the other would, would be in village. At some point, oh, yes, it's good because it's the hardest actually. difficulty. Uh -huh. I love how I attack move kiting against one unit. But, but oh, oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Here they come, the KP boys. Yeah, look at that. Let's get something proper. Orange had all those KP boys just hiding. Just watching Kami there. Entire base game just like. Look how those big boy army and the pike and everything shred. And the cataphracts too. Yeah. Oh, my army just get completely wiped by that. Okie Yeah. That's all there is. You can, all this you just say okie dokie and get back to work to building a new army entirely from scratch. Yeah, I suppose the benefit of leaving 20 arbs to idle in the garrison in the castle is you don't have to worry as much about the lone rams trickling in. Well, something alright? Now I've decided to. For the cavalry, I'm just going to use Mamluks. Since that's the most population efficient unit out of what I have to choose from. They're standing. But this, this mission reminds me a lot of the hmm. second mission. Where you had to kill the crusader pirates and the crusader bandits and the crusader 
Reynolds Crusader. Oh, no, it was no, it was Reynolds Bandits, Reynolds Navy, or and no, Rain. Oh. It was like three different enemies. There were, there were teal, and there were blue, and there were red. We should, we should be able to. It was like they on the. Um, provided there's not a. That, I'm not sure what the place is called, but anyway, the, the second mission, I think Lord of the Arabia is, is the... There is just, you have quite a low population cap of only 100 or something. And you need to, need to fight, uh, just like here was the pirates, the enemy was an Imperial Age and it took quite a while to do it because of the low population limit. And we were actually capped in Castle Age, this time we are, we get Imperial Age, so it won't be as tedious this game. Actually, that's... Trebs and fully units and whatnot, if we can't. A third mission was a bit broken since we got 200 pop, and that was definitely, uh, I would say that was definitely appropriate for 75 pop. Because otherwise, if you if you give the player 200 pop and the ones have had in the third mission, you will just stream to stream roll through that. Nam. 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 I accidentally split up my army then. So I was then thinking for a bit that I would just go to yellow, but then I changed my mind, decided no, let's go back to orange and try to clean them off completely. But what I haven't really thought about yet in that playthrough is that both yellow and orange have castles and whatnot inside of Jerusalem. It's annoying. Well, now I get. Yeah, now I get them. I thought I already had, but now I will spend a lot of gold on both heresy and faith. Because I was just... didn't have any inclination to deal with monks with my very expensive units and low population limit. So in the long term, it's, it's definitely... it can definitely be a worthy investment long term. Faith and heresy. And these expensive units, gold running out, and low population limit. And the best if I can with getting the value out of the situation. It's a few units. Might get that one. And my archers are just idling somewhere because I've completely dropped everything and I'm just microing these three mamluks now. At this point, I should just pull them away. Not much overall game value can get from. <laughs> I love they convert the freaking mining camp, and I was like, <laughs> they got one anyway. But I had heresy, so she died instead. I thought that Monk was going to just keep converting random no, buildings or whatever. Versions, both faith and heresy. So earlier when I spoke about faith and, faith and heresy, we actually hadn't yet. I thought we had, but I had missed it. But now you saw the idea of the monastery. Heresy at least, and faith also, or if I didn't, I will get faith soon. We're gonna, running out of gold, there's three tiles there to the north. Green now. There's one there running out, and after that there's not really much gold anymore that I know of on the ground. And then we get a bit of a problem since we're using so expensive units with Mamluks. And we have to be a bit more mindful about value in the fights we take. Because we are, if we are completely out of gold, it's going to be even more of slow pain trying to win this mission. And I was also a bit ver wary that if there would come another insane counter attack of 20 KP boys, Teutonic Knights and Cataphracts and whatnot. So I was a bit... I'm still a bit wary at this point where that would come. But I realized that I can't really do everything from the home base. I need to put forward bases to be able to sustain some kind of offensive. Luckily we find stone, we put the, use the, the stone to use. Slam down some castles to protect some production buildings, now we can sustain an offensive. 
the castle age units for whatever reason from Jerusalem, which is an imperial age. They have almost virtual map control, plenty of resources, I would think. So one might think there's no reason for them not to have quite good upgrades on. Let's see how we do this. I, I could have gone better, I could have gone worse. Nothing remarkable. Yeah, but the, the, the be right decision, best decision there is if you're unsure how it's going to go, you, it, it's better to not take risks and be on the safe side and just pull out what I did there. Just pull them back. And if you have something which you can deal with, like cavalry, and the cavalry. That's better than to risk losing this entire army if those orbs would have gone down, the castle would have been denied. Herbal medicine. Yeah, herbal medicine was very nice in this mission. There's gold here. Herbal medicine being the all times healing generation speed garrison units. Now I get more production business going, and the composition I'm going for from this point on is just Mamluks and Mamblists. They heal extremely fast with full medicine, like those orbs, they're already fully full HP again. Ones which I put in that castle. The forward base there. But we don't really have the population to, to take them both at the same time. No. Well, I realized, I think at some point, that either of the Crusader enemies didn't look really, really like they were going to resign one way of the or the other, even if you wiped the periphery bases outside of Jerusalem. So, so now I'll just focus on getting the main objective if we can towers. <laughs> Lose or to, tr to trade. Lou can see the writing on the wall. The wall on the ground. With... Look at those trade guards dodging ballistics and thumb ring. 17 arms. Absolutely redonkulous. Like the AI not only... <laughs> It keeps the game exciting, at least. Of random mangonels popping up, popping out here. My nicely grouped ops. No worries about the Teutonic Knights, though. All those ops, mangonels are scary. I'm very happy that mangonel went for the mamelukes and all that stuff, obelisks. But as you can see, I, I built the market, so I'm actually keeping that. Because we're out of gold now, uh, except for the, the contested gold, like this one here. Oh. Not much they can do with scorpions to my main base. And we're not really on lack for food, so that's fine. Uh, I was starting to get a bit worried now, because now we're seriously running out of gold. I saw gold piles, so I decided it's best to take it safe and just start to go for trade. That's always something you can do in, in well, uh, uh, any game, also multiplayer maybe. You have defeated an enemy and they still have a market and you can, you can actually trade with the enemy. Hello? No matter if it's single player or not, for the market. That can be a thing, but it's not really... There's not really a likely use case in multiplayer. If it's multiplayer and it's one for one, well, you've basically already won. If it's team game, well, you have more efficient trade to do with your teammates. So, it's only really, I would say, single player uh, situations, like specifically campaigns where it it becomes a likely use case scenario to start trading with 
uh, defeated now, opponent now. markets. So, well, you technically can in multiplayer, but there's not really a likely uh -huh. use case now, now. for it. Well, we start to get the trade going. Oh, they actually have the, the new... So the, the architecture of Cyrusens has been the same as always, but I think that's a new model, unit model for the car, car, the trade cart. I think there used to be only two unit models uh, before Definitive Edition. Now I just set orange to neutral as a precaution, not so so I don't accidentally destroy that market. Although I don't have any units there now anyway. Yeah, we're really tight on gold. We can barely afford the trade and trade technologies we want. It's not honor of gold. Yeah. So now we're with the uh, Bit of a stop here. Just trying to figure out figure out the gold situation before we continue. Want to secure the gold. There's another relic there which I haven't gotten yet, which I should just get ASAP. I think I do get it soon enough, but there's gold. I should take all the gold I can. I should take that as well. I think I do it soon. But it's nice I can just camp a few units there and get a few, few free real kills. At this point, I also start scouting, see if there's more gold. And while I could just keep pushing now, like I don't really have the gold economy to to reinforce in a units I lose, so I'm a bit careful now. So spent a lot of gold. The progress. Mamluk upgrading Mamluks, as well as both. Heresy and faith. Is it worth it? Yeah. It is indeed very gold intensive. All the upgrades for Mamluks and Mamluks themselves. As well as, as both heresy and faith. Although it, it is it is nice to have heresy and faith when you have units like Mamluks and there's monks popping up, up now and then, now again. So, it is really nice to have heresy and... But, but you can actually do quite a lot of damage even with just a few before Mamluks, which I try to do here now. Not that them damaging their economies doing much since they're not attacking anyway. Doing something is always better than being idle. It's interesting that... I don't know if it was intentional by the developers to remove the mouse cursor, because there's no mouse cursor uh, uh, variant anymore for garrisoning units. There used to be... A, just to find like the, the the door and the diagonal arrow, I thought it was that mouse cursor was just fine. But for now, for now reason, now for some reason there is no mouse cursor at all. Nice of them that they don't make any when like there's just a regular mouse cursor when you garrison. Same for garrisoning relics with monks. I'm not sure what I thought was wrong with the existing one for some reason. Now finally I take the second relics. Now we are slowly but surely getting some gold going with the trade. I did save them. Yeah. Do not just start deleting villagers because I need military population. Really fast. I like how it's game time one minute eight one, wait, game time one hour eight minutes and I haven't destroyed the first tower yet. <laughs> But I, I was also had in the back of mind that 
maybe there would be some trigger that once I attack or destroy one of the towers, there would be that insane lot of Tunic Knights and Cataphracts coming again. Because that, that's what happened the first time I started attacking the tower. And I actually didn't get the tower because that sudden wave of enemy units actually cleaned into my whole army I had there at the time. Mm -hmm. Trying everything at this point, trying to see if I can get some good go something good going with the market there. Yeah, look at the mouse cursor now to the monastery. There's no mouse, mouse cursor model anymore for Garrison Relics. Oh, that's a shame. I hope they will add something to that soon. I don't know if, the, if it's the developer's actual plan, but it, there's not going to be a vision mouse cursor for that. I find that's a shame. I look now if I look when I garrison, there's no special mouse cursor model there anymore. I really like the original, and I'm sure there was one also with Definitive Edition earlier. Oh, it won't. Just the, the door icon with the red arrow. Not sure why they removed that from him. It's much too fine with such a small. Yeah, what well, we can barely hear now, but what I think I was saying or what I said was that it's quite a lot of ground to cover. But at some point you basically just have to uh, get a focused army of trebs and military protectors and then just move around the whole map with that one army and take out the towers. But the reason the progress has gone to a ground halt is I got so paranoid and careful about securing gold income, but that's that's basically in the bag now with the, the, the good trade we have going, we have two relics, so it's a bit safe. It's relatively safe now. Now soon enough I start to get Get going with the trips to take the towers. <laughs> Meanwhile, securing the gold and waiting for the trips and the big steamroller army. I'm just being annoying at the yellow and getting their units. Will they actually go? Yeah, I found out interesting stuff about trade cart uh, unit pathing which market they choose. So even if we do have an uh, existing market up to the north, uh, no mat seems that no matter the miscellaneous other markets you have, they will always go to the furthest market. That's what it seems. Hey, <laughs> we finally got the first tower destroyed. One hour, 40 minutes into the game. Not minutes to slow down a bit early. No, and I'll see now what happens when I uh, send a few to that blue market or something interesting. I would have thought that they would then go back to other Teutons. Yeah, I asked myself, do they have murder holes? And I was like, oh, they're Teutons. Yeah, they have to have murder holes since they're Teutons. Teutons getting free murder holes. Keep it, boys. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit faster than Rambo. Oh, they did they did get a slight speed buff at some point in the last year or two, I think. Or two years ago. From 0 0.7 to 0 0.75. Something like that. Orange still hanging around the villagers here and there. Probably nothing. <laughs> now I'm curious to follow up on what. So there's the trade card. You see that right there? It is. So it went not to the market I built for that one, but it goes to the one which is furthest away always. That's more. Now there. So, of course, that's that's based. That's what the gold amount is based on. If I would have, to, oh, if I would only have had the closer market, it would give less than 88 gold. But 
I was prepared to accept that it, even for less gold it will go to the first market. But actually, it seems they will always go to the furthest market. So. Uh, was not aware of. Or had forgotten. I see, that's, that's a really tricky tower if you look at it. Because it's almost completely adjacent to monastery. And if we raise that monastery, we, <laughs> we will lose the game. So that was cheeky. Cheeky design there. Oh. Alright, let's get going already. We have the gold, we have the army. I'm just being a bit slow. I guess maybe I was having too much fun here, just being annoying to yellow with these Mamluks. Uh, I did poke a whole wood trebs up there in the north and then explored a bit what it looked like in Jerusalem. Oh, here's what's fun. The, these six Mamluks, they one-shot knights, but they don't one-shot the long swordsmen. I found that very amusing. Or with what six. But I, at some point, I had have five or six Mamluks fully upgraded. And they one-shotted the knights just fine, but they did not one-shot the long swordsman. Maybe you were already able to observe this that at some point now, or if you'll see it soon. Alright, now I'm on the way to destroy all the towers already. How many ifs and buts and securing gold. But there's, there's not really much fight to put up anymore after that. A lot of KP boys and cataphracts. Just spur sporadic knights and long swordsmen throwing themselves at these mamluks. Not much resistance uh, anymore. So I did want to prepare to have a good economy. Oh, no, I'm just having fun with this and see if I can get to town center. Only by doing this. Oh! Oh, that's okay. It takes quite a lot of time. I left three. Time to take this tower. Yep, now we're taking the tower. Tower so slowly but surely. But in case there would suddenly come uh, waves of enemies destroying my army, I do have the economy to, to quickly replenish that army now. In case that would happen. So that's why I got so cautious. Can go wrong, we can lose. We've seen it, especially with Joan of Arc, these, these freaking playthroughs taking. Three towers remaining. Remember, my lord. Do not allow any place of worship to be destroyed. These two hour Joan of Arc videos because it took me freaking three or four attempts because I got a bit careless or, or, wasn't, or wasn't patient enough. But it, overall it takes less time to go slow the first time than it does to go fast and then you have to do several attempts. So. In that sense, it, it is faster than losing and then doing a whole new attempt. But I, I didn't remember how, how hard, if this mission would be hard, like, suddenly. Because sometimes these campaigns can definitely surprise you, like the... The... I'm not sure what the... I don't quite recall what the, the last mission, but Joan of Arc 6. The uh, last mission for Joan of Arc, that, that really catches you off guard the first time you play that one. The hard in definitive edition. So, you get three... Three Imperial Age enemies sandwiching you when you're still in Castle Age. And have just barely gotten off your economy, but... I played around with that mission a little bit afterwards, and it turns out you can actually exploit a, a trigger if you, you know how to do it. Because that huge insane wave was just based on one trigger, which you can actually avoid easily if you know how to do it. Although that would technically be cheesing. Oh. Cheesing the campaign. Cheesing the game. 
but oh, there's a way to do that if you like cheating. I to do that, but I don't want to play at the start. Slowly but surely. Getting those towers. Two remaining. We have one on the south by the Knights Templar right. Castle. There's and then there's the one Bombard Tower camping by the monastery at the center of Jerusalem. Two remaining. Well, let's, let's wipe out. Let's wipe out. Uh, wipe out yellow. Yeah, there's plenty of gold there. There's gold there all along. We could, could have probably won this mission 15 minutes earlier, half an hour earlier, if I found that gold. I got, I got so paranoid and so careful and patient that when I decided I need to secure gold first. So that I can securely... So that, that, so that it's not the whole game if I suddenly get overwhelmed by a wave of enemies out of nowhere and my army dies. Well, we, we got this in the bag now for sure, though. Red Mill Crane, for whatever reason. So I want to do some weird what doubt cows or something, I don't think so. Oh, that's... That's dicey, because if we destroy this monastery, we will lose. So, be very careful. Yeah, that. now now it's when I realized that. That's how they threw. One. Yeah, that's Now I'm deleting. Finally deleting some food. For more military. Not that it makes too much difference. Well, it's nice to get five traps. To speed us up so we can speed this offensive up a bit. Now suddenly there's orange Teutonic Knights coming from I don't know where. Guess they have a castle still somewhere. Yeah, I'm still using attack move in the <laughs> there's one single unit. I guess I guess I got into a habit of just using attack move since I don't did those. All of those videos were about attack move and attack move again and again. Look how fast those heal on the garrison. Insane. I wonder if they buffed it at some point in Definitive Edition, Herbal Medicine. Or rather Garrison the units healing oh. suddenly runs classic AI move. But we can clean ourselves up easily with our Mamluks. You guys who, who have been following the campaigns, I hope you have uh, enjoyed how they've progressed. There's not, not that much difference, but I know there's been a few quirks. And well, there's, was, there was one Joan video, which got really terrible video quality because I missed the settling text. And we fixed that for the future permanently, and now there was this audio issue, but now I know how to no, check no, no, for no. that every time. And uh, as of Saladin, I boosted the audio for the exposition cutscenes before and after. 
so you can hear them more clearly. Maybe you've noticed that with Saladin. Before with, with, with Wallace and Joan, the cutscenes were the narrator was really low volume, but now I've, boost, I've boosted, I boosted their volume in post. So you can hopefully hear them better. But you can hear them better. So there's small increments of, of quality I, I try to bring this series. And also sometimes if there's uh, now I notice there's the big guy, guy there, the master of the Templar. If you strike me down, I will grow more powerful than you can possibly imagine. That would be impressive. What you do from the grave. Like, are people going to see you such a or I think I said a lot of things here which the OBS just cut off. At first I was like, oh, there's the Master of the Templar. And then, then there was that voice line, you'll be more powerful than ever if you cut him down. And then I just said some stuff like, oh, that would be interesting. Uh, like, does he mean that he would be such a marcher? And that's probably what he means, and that's what I said. O OBS cut. Cut off most of that. Would there come a big army? There was some trigger. Sneaky, sneaky, trying to do sight, eh? Yeah, it's funny. They are trying to re rebuild. In plain sight, next to your castle with one villager. And you're like, yeah, really? <laughs> oh, there, there's... We could, we should basically just push north for the last tower now. There's not really much that yellow can do anymore, but for... For some desire to be thorough. Now I got spies. I've been changing the price for like in the playthrough now for a bit. First of all, 13. Well, that's that's probably why I kept going for yellow because I wanted spice. Knowing. For whatever reason, we didn't really need. But now we have spice. We see the whole map. Not much news. Now we are finally pushing for the final tower. How the All right. So. Anyway, I was not sure why I was loitering there, but I was I was admiring the sound design that the obelisk sounds so different when you have zoomed out and they zoom. It's just hope. Don't. And then they sound very different when you zoom in. That's what I was why I was loitering about there. But now we're finally going for the final tower, the final push of this mission. So I was wondering what to do. I thought it would be too risky to use trebuchets, since trebuchets can be inaccurate and there's slight risk, I guess, that you could destroy the monastery. So I first was thinking, hmm, petards? That bomber tower probably just easily killed petards, unless you have some elaborate cavalry... Debating the it's like minesweeper cannonballs. Yeah, no, I said it's like minesweeper. Like, destroy the wrong building. It's done for you. Yeah, not much more to this game than just getting the that tower and not destroying any sacred Jerusalem sites. Can we? Yeah. When this I expected. The obstacle is 
relatively good damage. I don't remember if Saracen still gets bonus damage to the buildings with the archer, with foot archers. They used to do. They used to, but I'm not sure if they still do. There we go. That it? There we go. The city is ours. Did it. We did. Yep, yep. The last time I entered Jerusalem as a crusading knight. I waded through the blood of victims. This time, not a building was looted. Not a townsperson was injured. Saladin set free nearly every prisoner he took. The citizens of Jerusalem proclaimed Saladin as their savior. He offered to free me. But after 20 years in his service, I have decided to see this journey to the end. The Siege of Jerusalem, the mission of Saladin. Heard it? Fourth mission of Saladin. Yeah, so leave a comment how you liked this uh, solution to this problem with the audio. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> it was basically me casting my own playthrough. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye bye.